Hi, this is Dr. McCall, and I'd like to bring your attention to a vitamin that you and your family may not be familiar with. And really, it's been called the forgotten vitamin for, for a number of good reasons. Uh, and in many ways, it's similar to vitamin D. It provides many of the same benefits. Uh, and as you know, we, prov we, uh, we help popularize that, and now it's really uh, become very pervasive, and many people are using it and getting the amazing benefits from that. And uh, largely uh, became popular because there was lots of clinical data on that be because they had relatively inexpensive, simple test for vitamin D. Now the test for this vitamin, vitamin K2, does not exist yet. There's no inexpensive assay for it. So as a result of that, there's not loads of studies and there's not a lot amazing uh, media attention that's being drawn to this. But it, nevertheless, we know from the science that has been done on this that it's a, a powerful and effective tool to help you optimize your health. Now, what areas is vitamin K2 so useful for? Well, the primary one is your bone density. And as you age, as you age it becomes weak, thin bones become an issue. And if you see a conventional physician, what they're going to recommend are drugs like Fosamax, which uh, will destroy, actually destroy, one of the two primary cells in your bones and they destroy the osteoclasts, which are cells that are designed to tear down bone. And why would your body want to tear down bone? Well, it take, gets rid of the bad bones, and it has osteoblasts, which actually build bones up. So the, the, the theory is, is that if you stop those osteoclasts, the bone becomes stronger, but it doesn't. Here's the key. It becomes denser, but it doesn't come in stronger. It actually becomes weaker, so you actually increase your risk for fracture rate, which is why we don't recommend anyone take those types of drugs. It makes a lot more sense to actually build up the osteoblast, which you can do with vitamin K2. Very important uh, benefit of making sure that your body has enough K2 is that you will build up the osteoblast, increase your bone density and your bone strength which is the key and will decrease your risk of fractures. Of course, it's a, it needs to be part of a comprehensive program. It's not a magic bullet. You need to make sure your vitamin D levels are important, your intakes of other important minerals like calcium, magnesium, zinc, strontium, uh, boron, all these other elements that will help integrate uh, into the bone matrix and make sure it stays strong and it prevents it and actually start to reverse the osteoporosis. Now, it also is useful for cardiovascular health. And of course, it's a leading cause of disease for most of us. So it, it actually work, it goes into the blood vessel cell wall and helps build it up and makes it more resistant to plaque. So it's key, key to, key to cardiovascular health. And it's uh, been also shown to be useful for your immune system and actually to decrease your, the, the risk uh, of Alzheimer's. So key important components that, you, that, that can benefit you. Now, uh, there are different types of vitamin K that you need to be aware of. And there's simply vitamin K1, 2, and 3. Vitamin K1 is also called phylloquinone, and that is uh, available in vegetables. Specifically, it's very high in spinach, uh, and vegetables like that. So amazing uh, type of vitamin, but unfortunately, the K1 will not provide the benefits I just mentioned. It has other uh, important uses, primarily in the clotting system of your body, but it, and you should in, uh, absolutely receive this vitamin, but it's uh, I ideally obtained from vegetables, and that's relatively easy to get. Vitamin K3 is... Uh, uh, menadione, and that is a synthetic version, and I do not recommend that anyway. You do not want to get a prescription for this. Do not want to take vitamin K3. What you want is vitamin K2, menaquinone, uh, and uh, that is the one that provides the benefits. And it is actually produced by bacterial fermentation. So the highest known source of this is really a food called natto. And if you're not familiar with it, it's actually fermented soy, and it's a typically available in Asian food stores. Uh, and if you have access to that, it's certainly something you could do, and I would strongly encourage you to consider it. Unfortunately, because it's slimy and relatively foul-smelling, it's kind of difficult to consume. You could mask the flavor with salt and mustard, and, and I did consume that for a while, and, uh, but it is a bit of a challenge. Uh, but clearly, the best value way to get vitamin K2 is through natto. Now, you can also get it through other types of fermented food, and the most common one would be fermented dairy. It has about one-third the amount per serving uh, of, of vitamin K2 as natto, but clearly you can get good therapeutic levels with it. But it has to be fermented. Ideally, I would recommend from, uh, a raw fermented cheeses, but you can get it but certainly from pasteurized fermented cheeses. Important to know that raw milk, even though I recommend it, does not have the vitamin K2 because it's not fermented. So you can also get it from other types of fermented foods like kimchi or other f fermentation processes where the bacteria pr actually produces, and that's clearly a way to do that. But if you're not uh, having these types of foods in your diet on a regular basis, then you're certainly going to want to consider to supplement it, especially if you have, are pre predisposed to some of the conditions I just mentioned. And, the, and let me give you some guidelines about how to select a supplement that will provide you with the highest quality and the best value you can get. You want to be, be real, pay real careful attention 
uh, to a lot of different variables. And I listed most of them in a table lower down on the page. You can read those. But really one of the key differentiate differentiated ones and ones that we encountered as we were searching for a new supply for our vitamin K2 was uh, a, a, a system that you may not have heard, and I certainly didn't before I encountered this company. It's called a drug master file. There are manufacturers that can produce supplements at such a level that they actually qualify uh, it, it to be produced as, as a drug. And by doing this, they actually submit a file to the FDA that allows them to, and this is all a voluntary process, to, to inspect and evaluate all their internal processes that ensure the quality and the uh, level of the, the, the products so that they are stable and pure. So um, we were actually able to identify a company that, that went through this whole process and actually submitted a drug master file to the FDA. So, uh, but the, so, so the quality is just unquestionable. So if you are searching for an alternative to the one that we offer you, the one point that I would really emphasize is to contact the manufacturer and make sure that they have submitted a drug master file to the FDA because that will assure you of the quality. It's really the highest level of purity that you can uh, seek to achieve. Uh, you know, we have a lot of problems with drugs. There's no question about it. I don't recommend them for virtually anyone. But one of the things that the drug companies have been very good at, and you cannot take this away from them, is that they produce high quality drugs. It's very, very rare to ever see a manufacturing mistake a defect in the process where they actually isn't what's in the pill or it's the wrong dose or the wrong level. I mean, what, you, what, it, what is on that label is what you get. The challenge, of course, is the wrong approach for treating most every disease that we know of because it only treats the symptoms, doesn't treat the cause. So that's my take on that. Uh, and additionally, what, one of the other benefits of finding this company that uses this process is that they actually did it at relatively less expen uh, inexpensively, less expensive than the other products. So we were able to reduce the price quite dramatically because truthfully that's been one of the limitations of most people using vitamin K2. It's been relatively expensive a supplement, but we've been able to radically reduce the price to bring it to more people. So we're really ha excited about that. So hopefully uh, this is information that you'll be, you and your family will be able to use to help you all take better control of your health.